let's jump to the story from the Daily Mail. This is the greatest poll I have ever seen done. I am so excited for this, and I can't believe they actually did this poll. JL Partners polled 500 likely voters about the upcoming debate. Half of voters expect Biden to forget where he is during first debate in Atlanta and walk off the stage on the wrong side. <laughs> That's an amazing poll. Could you imagine a pollster calls you and it's like, hi, we're here about the uh, presidential election. Do you think Joe Biden will forget where he is and wander off the stage in the wrong direction? Half of them said yes. This is awesome. So uh, uh, 79% expect Trump to interrupt Biden. Agreed. Uh, 70% expect Biden to mess up his words. Mm -hmm. Yes. Trump to tell a rambling story. 61%. Now that I, I, I don't, I don't know if I, I get. He, he loves a good aside. I feel like he, he has a couple, uh, moments but, where he's like, but at a rally, maybe I, I think rambling, rambling, uh, uh, story is, is charged language. Yes. But he, yeah. he does like to, to tell some stories at a rally though, not a debate. You know, but you can control the time. Yeah, they're wrong about that. Love time. Trump's mic to be cut off. Fifty-four percent. See, yeah. that's the issue. They're saying there's going to be like a hard time limit, and they're going to cut mics when it limits up. It's it's ridiculous. Forty-nine percent expect Biden to forget where he is. Forty-one percent think he'll walk off the wrong side of the stage, and forty percent think he will have problems standing up. Didn't they want chairs? I think they did at one point, but I don't know if was it that, was that. Was that? I don't know if that was that was this. I think they wanted chairs or something. Might as, well do, like, might as well do hospital beds at this point. <laughs> they were like, we just like it to be virtual and pre-recorded. Well, what's interesting about this, too, is they have a stipulated agreement that Trump's mic will be cut off if he interrupts. That was one of the stipulated terms because yep. they were so afraid of Trump's sort of pithy Arnold Schwarzenegger type comments like because you'd be in jail. Uh, and so and, and Trump does have that sort of one liner quality. So it is kind of uh, I, I, I think. It's it's good as a meme, but you know this. I I don't think Trump really is is prone to, to rambling. And again, the fa like they fear Trump interrupting with those because it interrupts a Biden ramble and sort of reveals it for the ramble that it is. Yeah, if the goal of the debate is to be the one who speaks for the most time, who kind of controls the pace, then you know being able to sort of out talk your opponent isn't bad. Uh, you know, again, rambling feels like it might be a sort of biased question, but. You know, in terms of all of this, do you think that these low expectations for Biden, like the fact that there's even a conversation that he'll exit on the wrong side, it sort of works to his favor because people don't believe he can do it. So sort of any sort of basic performance is is a win for him. I think it totally does. You know how when they do those Oxford debates and, and they determine the winner not by who agree how who in the audience agrees with the issue most but they sort of take a baseline who is on this side of the issue before the debate and then they measure the winner by who came over to the other side you know uh, whose expectations essentially changed in favor of one versus the other and this is another one of these reasons why i just caution not to underestimate biden in, in a debate context and i go back to the low power mode because even the videos that we watched that was Biden when he was at one of these one of a million of these perfunctory presidential things. You're in the garden. You're watching a paraglider. OK, I need to just, you know, smile for the camera. But in your head, you're thinking about everything else you have to think about as president. And there's so many of those functions that are perfunctory. I would not be surprised if behind closed doors, low power mode comes off and we need to be sharp for, for an hour or two. Um, and uh, and and I I do expect that in in this in the debate. You expect him to sort of tighten up in time. Yeah. I mean, but is that sort of a low expectation for voters that we can get Biden to be high performing for an hour or two of the day? I mean, there's no doubt that being the president of the United States is a demanding job. I remember seeing those before and after pictures of Obama who had mm -hmm. gotten very gray. You know, it's it's I can't imagine that the demands time travel stress everything else. But if Biden can only perform for one debate with multiple weeks of, of warning, is that good enough in terms of a political leader? Well, there's another aspect of this that I find interesting that's sort of related, which is the lack of celebrity endorsements in the summer of an election season. You know, part of this is because while it doesn't necessarily cripple Biden to be so absent and to be so sort of easily dunkable on for, for these kind of moments, the total absence of, char of charisma makes it hard for people to tell their own audiences to go out for this person without looking either profoundly uncool or looking like a naked shill because 
what do you really see in this person? Because there's nothing really to go on. And Biden doesn't do press conferences. Trump did press conferences every single day during during coronavirus, and he was probably the most accessible press person. Uh, Biden d- does not do public press conferences. It, it, in in the limited context that he does every couple months, it's a couple of questions, none of them adversarial, and then in tightly controlled. And the and what I what I find really interesting is typically. You know, they, they say that politics is Hollywood for ugly people, that that politicians aren't necessarily highly charismatic by nature. But if they are up to a certain point, celebrities can kind of do the rest. And right now there is almost no I mean, you have a, a couple of these, the De Niro's. Um, but, you, you know, we're used to seeing I mean, remember in 2016, you know, the 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 tapes of. A hundred celebrities, you know, you could do a, a two hour supercut of all the, the musicians, the actors, uh, you know, every field of entertainment and academia and and cultural celebrity coming out for Hillary Clinton. They did the same thing with Obama. They did the same thing with Bill Clinton. But this election season, it's almost on mute. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, there's actually a list of endorsements. On Wikipedia, Joe Biden, I noticed something interesting. Joe Biden doesn't have a doesn't have categories for like celebrities. It just has notable individuals. And so it mentions Mark Hamill, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, George Conway, Stephen Colbert, George Clooney, J.J. Abrams. There's a, there's a good amount here, right? George Clooney, so, Obama, and, and Julia Roberts are hosting this fundraiser. Yeah, on, and on you've got Saturday. Steven yeah. Spielberg, Spielberg, Martin yep. Sheen. Uh, I don't know, Matthew Iglesias, congratulations, you're listed as well. But when you go over to Trump's, he actually has so many, it breaks them down into political operatives, actors, musicians, sports figures, religious figures, and activists and public figures. So certainly Trump has substantially more than Joe Biden does. Biden does have his celebrity endorsements, but uh, they actually, like, when you look at the list of endorsements for Joe Biden, I mean, how many of these are actually, okay, how many actors do we have? Let's see, one, two, three... Uh, do, 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 do. let's go, let's go, let's go. Four, um, five. Oh, Eva Longoria. Uh, six, seven. Oh, Rob Reiner. He's got a, he's got a mount. Nine, ten, but eleven. Kim, how 12. many? Kim, how many of these are A-list actors that were in a movie this year? I mean, the, like, I mean, all yeah, of. Yeah, to be that, fair, I mean, like Dean Cain and like Kevin Sorbo are. They're, they're, they're doing like parallel economy stuff. That's exactly but. what I was going to say. Was what you're talking about is that I don't think these celebrities have the same cultural clout that they used to. Like we're in a totally different landscape than we were in 2016. Their endorsements really don't matter that much. Maybe it does at an LA fundraiser with Julia Roberts and George Clooney, but culturally speaking, I don't think they're relevant. Yeah, but but take a look at this, right? So if we look at Joe Biden for let's look at like music. Okay, who does? Who, let's see if he has any names in here that we can actually be like, oh wow. Um, Lenny Kravitz. Where's Lenny Kravitz? Well, I, I, the, I, the AP wrote about this yesterday. So yeah, I'm but Lenny Kravitz is a Gen X. He's not. Is is he? He's not a big deal right now. I mean, no. Sh- shout out, whatever. He's he's all right. Um, Lizzo's popular but, with Lizzo. Lizzo's on the okay. list. Liberal. Yeah, she is. Oh, okay, well there you go. All right. What, what's her name? Is it just well, most of the rappers are supporting Trump? But when you look at Trump, you've got uh, female rappers, Azealia Banks, <laughs> Benny the Butcher, Kodak Black, yeah. Orgiato Below, Waka Flocka Flame. Sexy Red. I, I do like that they included Naked Cowboy. <laughs> sure, I guess. Da Baby. Oh, I didn't know Aaron that Lewis. One. Nice. Yeah. Ted Nugent's also a bit older. Lil Pump, Sexy Red. Lil, uh, Wayne, Lil Wayne, too. And Snoop Dogg even reversed his position on Trump. Did you see that? Yeah. Did he really? Snoop wow. Snoop Dogg, who, yeah. if you remember, held up a, you know, uh, did a music video essentially shooting Trump in the head or holding a gun mm-hmm. to Trump's head uh, when he ran the first time. He actually came out a couple of weeks ago and said, I got nothing but love for Trump. And, um, you know, wow. basically, uh, effectively all but in, uh, did a formal endorsement. So who does he got for sports? He got Andrew Tate as sports figures. I do love that. Uh, I, I feel like Trump's, it, it's not like the lists are, you know, Trump's list is obviously bigger, but Trump's got more relevant figures than Biden does. But I think that's kind of just obvious when you look at the polling, when you look at public sentiment, it leans slightly towards Trump in a lot of different ways. Not that it matters because all that really matters is whether or not Republicans can figure out how to win an election. I mean, it is interesting because typically Democrats lean on Hollywood and celebrities to say we are the cool, youthful party. I remember, uh, in, in 2020 at their convention, they had uh, Billie Eilish perform. And at the time, she was really on her come up. You know, she'd been huge during during COVID and everything. And, you know, maybe young celebrity starlets are just not 
interested in endorsing Biden, although we know that they are they tend to be politically active. I'm thinking of Olivia Rodrigo, the pop singer, handing out uh, the equivalent of plan, plan, plan B at her concerts. Like they have political positions, but for whatever reason, it's not translating this cycle into Biden endorsements. Even from what I can see, people who have endorsed him in the past. I'm going to speak specifically about Taylor Swift here. Read my mind. Yeah, yeah they right. can't get Taylor. Uh, also, yet. I'll just yeah. shout out the rest of the list includes like Kimberly Guilfoyle, Jackson Hinkle, Charlie Kirk, Carrie Lake. Uh, you got Malik Obama. That's great. You got me, Jack Posobiec, Amber Rose, uh, Scott Pressler's on the list. So I don't know, man. Whatever, I guess. Well, this is really where I see the low power mode, though, coming into coming into it more so than in, in the debate, in the sense that. Look at what Trump is doing today with Logan Paul, a 90 minute interview, you know, Nelk boys, like 60, 90 minutes. I think what, what's hurting Biden about this kind of low power mode and then save it for an hour or two of the day is that you can't do this kind these kind of media tours and these kind of, you know, the media blitz of connecting with all these celebrities because, you know, they can't get together to produce a video, to produce an interview, to do a little song together. Uh, he can't hit the road and do four cities to go to L.A., you know, for for this, to New York for that, and Chicago for this, whereas Trump is flying four or five cities a day. That was one of the things that Democrats were arguing was so great about the trial is that it hemmed Trump down physically in the trial room so that he couldn't go out and do the blitz that, it, that brings you the hearts and minds. And so I actually think part of the celebrity endorsement drought in, in the Biden election cycle here is, is the fact that he, he's not, he has to be on low power mode so much, he, he can't expend the energy to do these high profile, have to be present, have to deliver, because ha you, now you are in front of the cameras, in front of all their audiences, you actually have to be on point. And so he's, he's cut off from that. And I think part of that also has to do with a kind of left-wing civil war on the Israel-Palestine thing, where because of that issue dividing the left, a lot of celebrities don't necessarily want to, to endorse Biden because not only do they need to fear a Bud Light-style right-wing boycott, but their own, their left-wing, you know, flank might, half of their base may be or oh, Biden. against yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, you're making me think of, I'm going to go back to talking about pop culture, uh, Chapel Row and this, this, pop star who's who's really popular right now or she's really coming up uh, i think she was at the governor's ball in new york this music festival and she said the biden administration asked her to come to the white house and perform during pride and she was like no and seemed to say basically because of the israel palestine thing which is fascinating right i mean one of the things the media talked about constantly when trump was in office was how many of the you know sports teams that would win whatever tournament you know whether it's super bowl or whatever it was refused to come meet trump because he was bad, I guess, or whatever. Uh, and now it seems like this is starting to happen in uh, the Democrats' backyard in Hollywood, in the music industry. They're saying, well, I don't want to be associated with Biden because either I personally don't believe in him or he's too controversial because of the stances he's taken on this international conflict. Thanks for checking out this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel and we will see you all there.